So we have some amazing new reporting from Lever News. Now, let me just tell everybody that Lever News is what uh, the Daily Poster used to be. David Sirota and, and his team, they changed the name to Lever News, so, but they're still doing the same great work. So let's go ahead and take a look at this piece here. The Defense Industries Ukraine Pundits. Last week, CNN brought on former U.S. Defense Secretary Leon Panetta for his fourth recent appearance to talk once again about Russian President Vladimir Putin's deadly invasion of Ukraine. I think we need to understand that there is only one thing that Putin understands, and that's force, said Panetta on Newsroom. The former CIA director added, quote, I think that I think the United States has to provide whatever weapons are necessary to the Ukrainians so they can hit back and hit back now. At no time did Panetta nor CNN mention that he's a senior counselor at Beacon Global Strategies, a defense industry consulting firm that has reportedly represented weapons manufacturers, manufacturer Raytheon. The firm doesn't disclose its clients, but Raytheon and the defense industry generally stand to benefit from the conflict in Ukraine. The episode is part of a broader pattern and practice. Since Russia launched its invasion of Ukraine, cable news networks have routinely called on defense officials turned consultants to offer analysis and help the American public make sense of the crisis. Often, these analysts have used their TV time to call for greater U.S. involvement and bolder moves that could ratchet up tensions between two nuclear-armed superpowers. The networks have consistently failed to disclose uh, that these analyst day jobs, describing them instead by only their former high-ranking military or government roles, leaving viewers in the dark about the analysts' financial ties to defense contractors that stand to profit from increased or prolonged conflict. During its Ukraine coverage, MSNBC even failed to include disclosures when the network invited on former Homeland Security Secretary Jay Johnson, who served on the board of directors at Lockheed Martin, the world's biggest defense contractor. When asked about this matter, the phenomenon is not new. In an analysis of three weeks of news coverage, Following last year's U.S. troop withdrawal from Afghanistan, fairness and accuracy in reporting found that 20 of the 22 featured guests from the U.S. on the network's Sunday shows had ties to the military-industrial complex. At that point, too, the TV networks regularly neglected to disclose their guest ties to the defense industry. So 20 of the 22, 20 of the 22, and then now in this piece, now, by the way, I recommend you go read the entire piece because they give all the specifics. Hey, here's this person who is in this position in the government or was in this position in the Pentagon, and then now they're taking money from this specific defense contractor. And So first of all, I would say up front, none of these people should even be on air commenting on the war. But beyond that, if you're going to have them on the air, which you shouldn't, but if you're going to, you have an absolute obligation to maintain your journalistic integrity and say, Hey, just so you know, they're funded by people who want the war. They're funded by people who make more money the more conflict and death there is. It's just basic stuff. This is just basic conflict of interest stuff. And they're not doing it. They're never doing it. And again, the dirty trick that's played is also they're described by their former high-ranking positions, former head of the CIA, former, you know, Obama um, defense advisor, whatever. Again, the list goes on and on. There's, uh, in fact, I have it here. The three that they give a whole lot of information on. Okay, one of them, the name is cut off, but you got uh, Michelle Flournoy, Jay Johnson, Leon Panetta, and then somebody bash. It's cut off in my, my little thumbnail thingy here, but guys, this is the way that you manufacture consent. If you have very serious, very intelligent people with former high-ranking government positions on air in suits and ties looking all official, and they tell you in, in a somber tone, well, we have no choice but to meet the force with more force and to give more weapons. And, you know, these are people who are floating a no-fly zone in Ukraine. A no-fly zone is World War III. Do you understand that? A no-fly zone means we shoot down, us or NATO shoots down Russian fighter jets in Ukraine. That's a direct military conflict between two nuclear armed powers. So in other words, to get the bag, to get the check, they go out there and casually argue for World War III because they're representing the interests of the military industrial complex. Now, look, again, don't take my word for it. You go back and listen to Dwight Eisenhower's farewell speech from the White House, where he warns in no uncertain terms, look, we have to be careful because war is a business and some people get really, really rich off of war. And so there's a, a messed up incentive structure where you're going to have like a, a permanent war economy where people are going to want to keep doing war because they get wealthy from war. And especially when you talk about, you know, selling weapons 
to governments overseas or to dictatorships. And so you can fuel conflict and not care about the consequences because you're counting the dollars and cents over here. And so it's a really nefarious, dirty, disgusting trick. Now, look, to me, when I look at this article, and again, go read the whole thing. It's phenomenal. I look at that and I go, I don't know how this isn't viewed as like misinformation. These people go on, give a skewed picture of the war, give a biased picture of the war, a biased picture of the odds of even Ukrainians winning. And they act like it's the truth, the objective truth. And they manufacture consent in the process, make the U.S., public, which is generally more anti-war, maybe fall for the propaganda and lean more pro-war. And of course, these are the same people who are boosted by the YouTube algorithm, who are, this is the, you know, this is the conventional wisdom. These are the authoritative news sources, but it, it's not only are they not authoritative, they're incredibly misleading and they're doing misinformation. And there are massive financial conflicts of interest at play here, which aren't even presented. It really is astounding. Basically, at every level, corporate media has failed us, has failed the American public. And by the way, this is why you see there's always a consensus around war. Isn't that crazy? There's always a consensus around more of war. Remember when Biden pulled out all the troops from Afghanistan? You would have thought he came out and passed a pro-pedophilia bill when he did that with how the media melted down. I mean, it was nonstop. It was, oh my God, it's the worst thing he's ever done. Everything's going so bad. Everything's going so wrong. They never gave that kind of coverage to the actual war itself. Even when the Afghanistan papers came out and basically found the entire thing was a boondoggle and a quagmire from the beginning and people were getting rich off of it, people were grifting off of it, people were dying, nobody had any idea what the mission was, there were all these problems. When those papers came out, they barely even touched them. Nobody, people hardly ever talked about it. Now that deserved the hair on fire coverage of like, what the fuck, why are we even there? This is insane, can you believe this fact? Can you believe that fact? But they didn't do that. They saved all of their moral outrage for when we pulled out of the war. It's the one thing that the media across the board seems to agree on, whether it's Fox News or MSNBC or CNN, they're all pro-war. Well, it turns out one of the main reasons why they're pro-war is that the people who are the experts on these networks are paid by Lockheed Martin and Raytheon and the military industrial complex. That's unforgivable. That's unforgivable. And it's a dangerous game that we're playing here. The, the whole system is beyond broken. And look, I, you know, I'm not a journalist. I'm a pundit. I'm a commentator. But like, you look at that and you go, this is what we're up against. And I say we, I mean new media. I mean independent media. Whichever outlet your favorite outlet is. Like, this is what we're up against. We're up against a wall of misinformation and manufacturing consent. And it's astonishing. And then, of course, they don't have the, their, YouTube doesn't have their boot on the neck of corporate media. They have their boot on our neck. And they pump this stuff out as authoritative. So the pro-war position is authoritative. The lying and misinformation is authoritative. Because at least people who used to be in the government in suits and ties say it. Don't look at where their money's come from, though. Don't look at where their money's come from. Unbelievable. Again, credit to, uh, to Lever News. Fantastic piece. And it's a giant scandal, and it's hardly going to get talked about at all. Hey, y'all, do me a favor and like and subscribe. It helps out big time in the algorithm. Click the bell as well for notifications when videos drop. And watch that video on screen right now. You know you want to.